Mr. Sora, I'll stand in this side. Yeah, I understand that you don't agree with the violent reaction, but even the uproar going, oh my goodness, they don't have the right to criticise our prophet. No, Nobody said that. No, because about there's, a Jesus. there's a difference. There's a difference. Yeah, I know. I, and I, if anything, I would have stood with you. If you yeah. if you stood there and said, don't draw cartoons about Jesus, I would have stood with you and said, I agree with her. Don't draw cartoons about Why Jesus. Why do you think we don't, though? Hmm? Why do you think we don't? I would agree with the brother. I think that like, secularism has. So taken a think, certain hold. So you think that the reason yeah. that we don't is because we don't take our faith seriously anymore? I don't, I don't believe that the authorities take our faith take, seriously enough. Take the faith, Thank seriously. you. <laughs> I would yes. agree with that. Yeah. But I think it's also because my, con my conviction is not that Jesus needs me to make sure that he is being represented no, of correctly. But so, it is from our love for them that we feel the need to defend them and make sure that they are revealed in a good light. That's why we. That's why we do it. And the same for, uh, for the Muslims. When we come out and speak against defaming the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is out of love. It's not because we feel the need to defend it. Muhammad, Muhammad, sorry. Uh, with respect, with respect, my brother. That love is shown by slaughtering people, torturing people. And that's what yeah, Muslims do. That's what Muslims that. do. No, no. That's, I agree with you. Muslims do that. Yeah. The question is, does Islam teach it? Well, yes, I don't it know. does. I don't know. I'll, can I give you an example on that, sir? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's not a new thing, is it? It's not so, new. So, I'm going to read something from by um, customs of Muhammad. Are you Sunni Muslim? Are you Shia Muslim? I'm a Muslim that follows the Sunnah. No. Sunnah, he's Sunnah. Okay, so Sunnah. this is from Sahih Bukhari, okay? And then we make the judgment how we can defend, how as a Muslim you can defend this, okay? Uh, you are English speaker. I let you do you, oh, okay. do you mind reading sure. it for us? Um, all right. So a group of people from the Ukil tribe came to the Prophet and they were living with the people of As Sufa, but they became ill as the climate of Medina did not suit them. So they said, Oh Allah's apostle, provide us with milk. The Prophet said, I see no other way for you than to use the camels of Allah's apostle. So they went and drank the milk and urine of the camels as medicine and became healthy and fat. Then they killed the shepherd and took the camels away. When a health seeker came to Allah's apostle, he sent some men in their pursuit and they were captured and brought before midday. The Prophet ordered for some iron pieces to be made red hot and their eyes were branded and then their hands and feet were cut off and were not cauterized. Mm. Then they were put at a place called Al Hara, and when they asked for water to drink, they were not given till they died. And that's from Bakari 8, uh, verse 796. Let me just summarize. Me and, uh, I forgot your name again. I'm terrible with names. Sorry. So, um, let me just break it down for everyone to understand it better. Okay? So, group of people are moving to Medina. Okay? Because of the climate, they are ill. Muhammad's solution to their illness is drinking the camel urine and camel milk, okay? And those people get healed. It's not only they are healed, they are healthy, they are also become fat. So it's like good for them in somehow. It seems it is good for them. What happens is they kill the shepherd and then they take the camels. Muhammad deals with them in a way, first cuts their hands, and then their feet, to put the hot iron in their eyes, and then put them in the hot medina, and then let them to die in out. thirst, in thirst, okay? And then you just told this gentleman, actually, while Muslims are doing certain things, torturing people, is that in Islam or not? That was your question. This is Sahih Bukhari. Would you say, Cutting people's hand off and feet off, yes. putting hot iron, and letting them to die from the thirsty thirst, because Muhammad did, and the way Muhammad did, would you say that's Islamic or not Islamic? Right. First of all, first of all, give, give me your name. Muhammad. Muhammad. My name is Satun. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, you guys are famous on YouTube, don't worry. Um, right, so I'm familiar with the hadith, I know it very well, uh, and this was actually something we discussed already. Now, this is not, this is, we got understand, we have to understand why Muhammad did this, yeah, and it's actually shown why he did that. This is in a position of authority where he has to deal with crime and punishment, right, so where he has to enact justice on people who've murdered someone and stolen his wealth. And at that time, that was the penalty. 
It's that simple. Is that, so, is Sharia, is part of Sharia law cutting the hands off feet? And then feet, hands and feet, and then no. putting it on the eye. Is that not where that comes from? Huh? No, that's actually not okay. where it comes from. Sharia law, first of all, we have to understand what is Sharia law. Is there, a, is there a uniform understanding of what Sharia law is? But I'm just asking if Sharia no, 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 conditions are yeah, met. But we have, you... to, we have to understand. But this is before we go to what does Sharia actually teach, we have to understand what Sharia is. So what be, is Sharia? Before you move, before you go so fast. Is, no, no I'm, actually, I'm actually not. She's actually skipping a little uh, by trying to go straight to the rulings without first understanding the term and what the term actually means. Sure. Before you move that so Fast for me. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not that intelligent. I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. So here's the Quran. Yes. Can you show me from the Quran? Punishment for the stealing and killing human beings. I, I don't is, have a memorized the Quran, so I wouldn't is, know to, to look through. We can Google heart. it. We can Google it. It is in the Quran as a punishment of cutting the hands and feet and putting the hot iron in their eyes and letting them to die from the thirst. Mm. Can we just check if it is in the Quran that you say because Muhammad practiced the dealing with the crime and yeah, then he practiced so that. Yeah. Oh, that's I think where I know, we see him doing oh, this. I think, uh, I know what. Brother uh -huh. does not in the Quran. Not the, not the whole eye, but the hands and feet is. No, the, 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 the eyes in the eyes, that's not in the Quran. I know that. The hands and feet is. The hands and the eyes. So, last week, when we were talking about homosexuality, he said if all the Sharia conditions are met, then we should kill homosexuals because that's the punishment in the Quran. So I'm assuming that you apply the same logic. Last case scenario. Last case scenario. Yeah, but I'm assuming that you apply the same logic. The same logic to theft, yes? What, today? To theft. I'm to assuming theft. you apply the same logic to yeah, theft. Yeah, but, you know, but this is the judicial rulings, yes. yeah? And I'm not a person to enforce it. It's not any man willy nilly. It's not like if I see someone steal something, I'm the one to go and enact that. Yeah? That is down to the judicial system. Right? And today, that doesn't exist. It's saying something there is no Islamic. Are you, are you disagreeing then, that if all the Sharia conditions are met, it is appropriate to cut off the hands and feet of the feet? Are you saying that if all the Sharia conditions are met, it is appropriate to cut off the hands and feet of the feet? Okay. The way that people, the, 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 the way people go about it today, the way the Muslims go about it today, it is not as stipulated within the, within the guidance that we have. Because I'm arguing that even if the Sharia conditions are met, it is never appropriate to cut off someone's hands and feet as a punishment. But this is like what I explained to you Can I add something? Sorry, I just want to add something what sister said. So am I right to understand that you are telling us how Muhammad deal with the tribe of Uruna. Sorry, say that again. How it Muhammad dealt? Deal. No, before that, you said something. I just didn't how quite Muhammad dealt with? How Muhammad right, right. dealt yeah. with the tribe of Uruna yeah. is does not actually come from the Quran as a punishment, punishment for the stealing and kill, stealing and taking killing um, shepherd as a as a cutting the hands and feet, putting hot iron in their eyes and letting them to die from the thirst does not come from the Quran as the revelation of Allah and Muhammad went against the teachings of Allah and practiced something. No, okay. I believe I answered that already by saying that the, uh, the gouging of the eyes is not in the Quran. The cutting of the hands and feet is in the Quran. But because I have not yet memorized the Quran by heart, I do not remember what, uh, what, the, what that certain punishment is for. And I do not remember the reference. I know it's in Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5. I know it's in 33. Okay. So, but Sorry, my so question, my question is, like, how much you remember? My question is, it, because you said it is not in the Quran, yes, it's putting the hot iron. Yeah. So are you agreeing that Muhammad went against the Quran, and Quran is the divine revelation of Allah? No, he didn't go against it. Because there are many. It's not in the Quran. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Why did Muhammad Allow practice me something? Allow me to ask. Just because something's not in the Quran doesn't mean whatever he did was against the Quran. Okay, for example, prayer is not stipulated exactly how to pray in the Quran. That means the way he taught us how to pray, it doesn't mean he went against the teachings of uh, the teachings of Allah or the revelation from Allah. Right? Similarly, when he's carrying out justice, okay, there were certain there were certain uh, punishments for certain crimes, and not all of them are stipulated. In the Quran. Okay, let me respond to that. Here's the, here's the my problem. Those are those are the mus those are Muhammad's actions are being practiced by many 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 Muslims by many many Muslims. 
I am and not, I, am not I, have, I haven't finished. So no. they have been practiced by many, many Muslims. It's not only they have been practiced by many Muslims, they are practiced by Muhammad, who is supposed to be the mercy to the world because Allah is Rahman Rahim. He's, he's my problem. That Muhammad chooses to torch people while there were easier way to deal with the punishment. Cut the hands and feet. Put hot iron, which you express, which is not in the Quran. I'm sorry. Uh, which you express, is it not in the Quran? And other part is not in the Quran is when uh, Muhammad let them to die out of thirst. So those are the punishments Muhammad practiced and Muslim world follow Muhammad who's supposed to be the best example to mankind and who's supposed to give mercy to the world. I have a problem understanding of the mercy here. And before, when we talked about this before, I brought up examples of Jesus being merciful. As yeah. opposed can you to give, yeah, can you give so, us some examples? Uh, when Jesus was confronted with a woman in adultery, he chose not to follow the law and stone her. Instead, he turned around and said, anyone who's without sin, cast the first stone. And then he uh, forgave the woman's sins, said that he didn't condemn her. So Jesus was merciful in that example. We are told to turn the other cheek. We're not told eye for an eye. Um, tooth for tooth, etc. So Jesus encourages us to be merciful. That's awesome reason to follow Jesus versus just to that story just confirms for me no, Muhammad not only can be the mercy to mankind, he cannot even be the good example. Can I respond? Sure. Yeah. Um, All right. So you brought the uh, you brought the example of Jesus, and then I brought the example of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he entered Mecca with ten thousand soldiers, right, and didn't lay a finger on anyone. Okay. What is so, the reference for that? Hold on, hold on. Um, Sorry, what is the reference for that? No, that's in the uh, what do you call it? Sirah. It's not in the Quran. It's in the Sirah. Is that the six thirty event? Yes. Okay. Now. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, addressing the, addressing, addressing, the, addressing the hadith because this is what we discuss in the hadith. Okay, like I said the 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 hadood punishments, all right, in in total, yeah, are meant as a deterrent. Now, there was a period in the Islamic history where these these laws were enforced. These harsh laws were enforced. As a result of that, there was a period where there was no crime whatsoever within the Islamic world. Yeah? Because people were afraid to commit crime, were afraid to commit adultery, to steal, to murder, because of what they could have as, an, as a punishment. Yeah? Compare, compare that to what we have today is our legal rulings yeah? in a secular society or Judeo Christian society. Now you get chucked in a prison, you get slapped on the wrist, you come out, you do the same crime again. There is no, there is no actual motive to stop crime. It's so easy to just carry on. And, and, you, and you people as Christians, having the same moral grounds as me, where you don't accept homosexuality or adultery, I hope. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we are yeah. Christians. Cool, so cool, yeah. But it, time yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't want to see that in the world either. Mohammed, sorry, I'm going to ask him no, no, no. one question. Sorry, Mohammed. Just to, this is so important. Go on. Show me one um, Islamic country that is. There is no there. such thing as an Islamic so country. Where does it work then? There is, there, what do you, uh, sorry, to, to, correct, to, correct, hold on, to correct myself, what do you mean by an Islamic country? Run by in, on the, the Sharia. Right, there's no such thing today. Okay, so let me, let me, just, let me just comment a couple of things you said. Yeah. So, um, sister, can you help me out in this? Yeah. Do you think. Was it really, really necessary, not only punishing people, but torturing them so that Muslim world would not do any crime anymore? And can you please provide for me the evidence that actually Muslim stop doing that? Because when they look at the tribe of Uruna, they freaked out and then they said, oh, Muhammad is going to, Muhammad is going to, torch us like this therefore do not um, do not continue to do that yet you have not responded to my question on why Muhammad is doing something which is not appeal which we cannot see in the Quran and then he's choosing to torch people 
Remind me, remind me, please. I said that simply because it's not in the uh, simply because it's not in the Quran no. does not mean he's going against uh, what is legislated. So Allah, Allah gives his divine revelation, and are forms. you trying to tell me Allah forgets to say? By the way, after you cut their hands and feet, please, please, after you cut their hands and feet, please, please, uh, put hot iron in their eyes and also let them to die in thirst. So, no, no, now you're putting words in my mouth by saying... I'm saying, uh, are you I'm, saying that? Oh, right, okay. Apologies. No, I'm not saying that, yeah, because I know that Allah doesn't forget anything. That will go against my creedal teachings, right? So to assume that I'm saying that is completely incorrect. Now, why the Quran has legislation, certain legislations within it, yeah? For us to use it as deterrence, yeah? Not to something... Oh, hold on in. I can't see my bag. Did someone nick I your bag? I um, uh, I think it is. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay Someone's got it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, continue. Right, uh... What poor memory? Um, <laughs> because it's not, because it's not in the Quran. Uh, okay. Sorry, say that again. Because it is not given as a revelation from Allah. It you are just mean, trying to justify. Yeah, it doesn't mean yeah. Sorry. Now, there are certain uh, uh, rulings that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam done to enact justice or to enact mercy, depending in the authority of in, whom? Huh? In the authority of whom? Him as a prophet. By you know, so of, of that, that, there are Allah, lots Allah, of ways. Allah, Allah will legislate something to Muhammad, and Muhammad will carry it out. Okay. Now we have to take in that hadith. Okay. We have the context in the hadith, but it doesn't say that this was applied all the time. What you believe, yeah, from what I gather, is because you're using this hadith to reference what Muslims are doing today. Is uh, you would. I, correct me if I'm wrong, you would think that this was something that was done to every single person. No, I'm not saying that. Let me, saying correct, that. Let so me what, correct that. So why are so you I am, refusing you, this as a... So you said, right? you said, when brother asked you a question, did yes, Muhammad uh, touch people with the punishment? Your uh, simple answer was, sorry, he said, Muslims are doing that. Is that, uh, you, your response was, but is that in Islam? So yes. I, I brought you hadith. Which had it clearly Islam, says Islamic teaching. Let me finish. Which had it clearly says yes, it is in Islam. But my go. problem is, my problem is, Muhammad is mercy to the world. Also, he is the one who brings the rules and regulations. In Britain, you are British. No, I'm Australian. But... Oh, <laughs> are you British? Yeah. Yeah, born British. Okay, so, so you are British. So in Britain. When a judge make a decision or when judge make a rule for the certain things, they do not need to practice that. Okay, he can say simply say punishment for that is this, this, this. He doesn't need to go and commit the crime and then come up with the response to that crime. Muhammad could simply say, guys, this can be done in this situation, yet this can be done in this situation. Yet he doesn't do that. He practiced that. He practiced that, but he doesn't choose the easy way. He chooses to torch people. Right, we're going round. I think we're going round in circles because you've said. In that point. case, I'll make it. Wait, I'll on. make you it very this, simple. No. Why do you follow man who chooses to torch people and let them to die out of thirst? Why? Right, because if you if you're gonna stick it to that one example, obviously someone would say someone. He's not knowledgeable about the religion or about his character and stuff. They, they will say, yeah, he shouldn't be an example. But that's even if, that's only if you're using this example. And still, it's not valid because that was him as a, as the ruler of a nation, carrying out justice in a manner that was done in that time, in that period of time. But so, uh, hold on, let me okay. let me finish. All right. But, I, but you've just contradicted yourself a little bit, haven't you? Because before yeah. you were saying that today in our Judeo Christian society we have people committing crime left, right and centre and yeah. if they knew that they'd have their hands cut off then they wouldn't do it. But now you're saying it was appropriate for the time. But no, before no, 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 you're saying no. it was I'm saying, I'm saying, now, I'm now saying you're the, saying it was only appropriate for the time. I'm saying the, the way the punishment was carried out. So like, okay. for example... So we should still cut people's hands off, we should just do it nicer? I'm not saying we should. It's not only cut, you cut I'm their hands and fists. You're not talking to a person that and then has the authority them. to do that. 
So I'm not in a position to speak about that. Yeah, which is why I was asking you about Sharia conditions. Right, before. and this is and this is why I needed to go back to understand what, what is Sharia. Right? So we need to. Well, that's a nice dog. Um, I, think I hate dogs, but it's a nice looking dog. Is, I like, I'm is, a cat person. Is, is Islam, okay. Islam doesn't yeah, like dogs anyway. I, I, think, I think he needs to go to the toilet or something. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, right, so because I'm quite happy saying, even if all the Sharia conditions are met, even if they are 100% guilty, yeah. it's not okay to cut off their hands and feet. Mm. That's not okay. Right. That's coming from a 21st century Because it is torturing. Yeah. So you are objecting to torturing actions. Yes. Yeah. But I'm, all, I'm also objecting to it a cruel and unusual punishment yeah. as well. Like, if I, if you steal something from me, yeah. I don't think that you should have your hand cut off. If I stole something from you and I was in a Sharia court and I was convicted, so, should my hand remember, be cut remember off? Remember what I said to you last week, that the, even if you were in a Sharia court, yeah, the ruling, the, the guidance set by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yeah. he said, do your best to avoid the Hadul yeah. punishment. But if, right? so, okay, so in, say I have, um, it's the fourth time that I've stolen from you and I say, I don't care, I'm gonna keep committing, I'm gonna keep stealing from Muhammad, should my hand be cut off then? If there's no other way to, to stop you from committing a crime, then, yeah, because I'll tell you why. Let, oh, let's look just, at it in a, just, uh, in, a, in a vast manner. The, the vast, the what this okay. does, what this yeah, 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 deterrent yeah. does, is actually protect society as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. It and protects you from being a victim, yeah. because no one will want to steal from you. They'll yeah. fear for the hand. Yeah. It'll protect the thief from being a thief, yeah. because he would he would be scared to have his own hand yeah. lost, yeah. right? Anyone else would be able to walk the street safely, because they would now know that no one's going to try still for them yeah. so you could I feel like we're having a separate conversation there because no, you're no, no. talking about is, no, is there I'm enough saying, to terror in apply? society from crime and right, what today I'm there saying isn't, is morally to, today, there's no justification for cutting off people's hands today uh, but we're not the ones that set the morals um, today in the society I you know, agree because so my God doesn't give me permission to butcher anybody Oh, well then this, and then this goes, this goes yeah. into this goes into a separate uh, conversation. Also, something, it will go off on a tangent because something I'm, might I have be to helpful. go back to the Old Testament and the New Testament. Something might be helpful so so to forth. consider if those. I want to try and say it on the slide. If those are the um, ways. Wait, wait, sorry. If those wait, are the ways. Address, can I just address what you what you said? Yeah. Uh, why would I follow and yeah. those certain things? So that punishment back then that was. That was the way people were punished um, back back then. Yeah, they would have yeah. their arms and uh, <laughs> legs he, chopped off and yeah. eyes gouged out. That would be the punishment. So that's how the punishment but was enacted. But I feel like I do feel like you now, are jumping back and forth no, between no, no, saying no, 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 it's no. a good deterrent and it was. So if something was no, no, good in that manner, time and today the if it's wrong, the, what like, does example, it say about example, the knowledge there of used our to land, be a time Mohammed? Where it was hanging. Yeah, that's a death penalty. Yeah. Now today is the. The needle, yeah. what's it called? Injection. The injection. Yeah. But there are two so, different so, so things. So it's two different methods. That's the that's the word I was looking so for. So what method. is the So the method, method, the method back then. The hand so the method back then is would be different yeah. to now. Sister, it right. might be helpful now, to remember this method is given by Allah, yes. by God. So there was something for right that, in seven time, but Allah never said. Oh. Or has, a, has, have, has Allah ever said in 21st updated, century, in it will be updated? So are you trying to say moral moral view of Allah changes from no. century to century? No, I'm saying the method. And where, the, where does Allah method. say, yeah. where does Allah say oh, what Muhammad did to the, what Muhammad did to the urina hand, is not acceptable for the 21st <laughs> century, yet it was acceptable uh, in the 7th century? And, the, and, I'm and I'm still wondering, so you're saying the methods change, so I'm still wondering, Wondering what is the appropriate method for the 21st century to cut off my hands and That's feet? That's stipulated in the Quran. So how do we do it according to the Quran then? How do you cut off my hands and feet according to the Quran? Uh, That's appropriate for the 21st according century. According to, the, according to the Quran, that is, even according to the Quran, when you expand on it, it's still the last um, yeah. thing. So right. the appropriate the method best, for no, the 21st hold on, hold on, hold on. century hold is to have lots and lots hold of ways to Actually, if you actually see, uh, uh, seen on the news, a lot of Muslims would have their sons being killed. All right? There was recently a woman who had a son being killed, a son, son shot dead. Yeah. Now, in the Quran, it would actually also say, and even in Islamic legislation, it would say you have three options. Yeah? You can either have the person condemned to death, you can get the blood money, or you can forgive them. She chose the best option to forgive the person. Now, and that's actually advised by Rasul Aisha. So Rasul Aisha gives those three options, but he says, but 
it's better to forgive. Okay, but so it's still more, but okay, so but so we're, say we're in that position yeah. and I say, no, I don't feel like being forgiving. I want him dead. Yeah. That's still that's morally right. acceptable. That's, that's still my right. That's still See, right. I don't, I think the Bible teaches me that I don't have that right over anyone and that God has that right. So, so I don't get to tell you, yeah. you should die for what you've done. You will face judgment in the next life in front of God. So you're, so you're against the death penalty then? Um, I am personally, yes, against oh. the death penalty. So, um, but I that's a bit of a tangent, isn't it? No, no, because it's so kind of my the question, same. My, my, in somehow, I feel my question still stands out. That was something acceptable in 7th century, which Muhammad was all right to practice it, while Quran doesn't say that will be unacceptable in the 21st century. Who no, said it's unacceptable in the 21st century? So you think it's all right <coughs> in the 21st century? I have never stated otherwise. Yeah. You, so it's all right in the 21st century. According, if this, look, okay, let me, let me just make it clear. It's all right in the 21st century if this gentleman kills a shepherd, his, his hands and feet should be cut, and then his eyes to be poked out, poked, um, get, so get I, hot I, iron I don't in, believe you and me. given the um, left le to die without water. I yeah. don't believe so you understand is me. That, is that, should that still be practiced today, yes or no? It's, it's not only uh, execution, it's, it's not a yes or no answer. Yes, hold I'm on, focusing on. on the torture. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, can I answer the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. So, I don't believe you're understanding me. Well, like I said, Rasul when he carried that out, that was a, he carried out justice in the method that was applicable at the time. Now today, if he would do that, well, there is a, there is legislation put in place for us. Yeah? And the best thing to do, the thing that we should do is try and avoid it in the best, in the best way possible, as, as much as possible. And the best thing would be to forgive him. As the Prophet actually, can, can we see that verse? It's not in the. It's not a verse. It's so, from a hadith. I have not so come here prepared. Okay, it like doesn't come. Have, so it doesn't come from the Quran. Yeah. It doesn't come the, from the Quran. Muhammad from says. Muhammad says, if or Allah states, sorry, because Quran is the saying of Allah according to you. Allah states, while Muhammad was all right to torch whoa, people. Whoa, 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 say that again. While Muhammad was all no, right no, no, to where, torch where, where people. Did you say that Allah saying? In the hadith that we the just read. Oh, the hadith, yeah. okay. So, <laughs> so, in the hadith that we just read, oh, yeah. Allah gives Muhammad the right to punish the people the way that he feels appropriate, yes? Because he's the prophet messenger as well Yet as the ruler. He doesn't abrogate or he doesn't command and in the Quran that method has should be changed. Yeah, and he also doesn't say, oh, for but, for, but forgiving them would be the best option. Yeah. And it, Muhammad, doesn't, and Muhammad doesn't, hadith, but Muhammad so doesn't show Muslims that forgiveness is the best option. He chooses to violently torture them. If you're looking at just this example, yeah. so, that's the that's the conclusion. The question is, how many hadith have you actually read? Actually, I read all Sahih Bukhari, all Sahih Muslim, all of them, all six weeks back. Yeah. But my so issue, you're telling me you can't just, find? Wait, hold on. I, I need I'm going to break it down. I'm no, going to no, break no, it down. Because so, now you're, you're portraying. The, can you give no, me the no, date? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Can you give me the date for the um, what happened in the tribe of Urina? It can wasn't. It wasn't. Right. First of all, you're misreading the hadith because it doesn't say eight it's the whole tribe. tribe. It's eight, people from that tribe. Yeah, eight people from right. that tribe. So, can, can you, do you know the date? No, of course not. You don't know the date. No. Would you say? Do you? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Right, okay. So, would you say it is before 625? <laughs> I, if I don't know the day, I wouldn't give you be able to tell you okay. whether it's before so, a certain day or after so, a certain day. That, that event took place on 6 to 27. How do you know? Genocide. You, you, you don't know? You just said you don't know when this I, Yeah, I said place. I don't know. So why are you giving a date now? I'm giving you a date for something else. If you wait, I'm going to finish the sentence. So that event took, that event took place in 6 to 27. Mm -hmm. Banu Croatia genocide took place. What Croatia okay? genocide? Banu Croatia, 800 people got killed. Thanks to. You mean you, Benny Poreza? Yeah. So eight, 800 to 900, 600 to 900 people. So do you think, do you think, if, do you think, if forgiveness was the option Allah was giving to, Muhammad was giving to the people, from in one of them, Muhammad should have practiced that. So there is very small possibility they all came together in same day. There is very, very small possibility. So Muhammad did not show any practice of forgiveness in those actions and both of them were in one of them, 
those people were torched and left to die. In other one, again, there was a torture involved and people were killed. All right. Sorry, I've got to go to church, so I'll no see problem. you later. Oh. Oh, see you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Sorry. So, by the way, you explained the Bari, Bari, Beni Koreda in incident. I'm a bit skeptical, skeptical that you know much about it. Can you, was it, according to what you understand, do you believe that it was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that ordered the execution? I read it for you. No, 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 no. I'm going to read it for you. I know the hadith by heart, okay? I know the circumstances behind it. Yeah. I'm asking you, do you, do you believe that it's Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that ordered the execution? So, I'm going to read it for no, you. No, I'm asking you a question. Muhammad, Muhammad, in this I'm one, Muhammad is passing the stone to Angel Gabriel. Huh? Uh, Actually, no. It's not. He's, he's passing to the stone. He's passing stone to the Angel Gabriel. And then on the end of the hadith says, A book and a declare. This, like, Allah, God's command is right. A book and a declare for the children of Israel, sons of Israel. So, Wait, what are we talking about? Still the Beni Koreda incident? Yeah. Because that's not the hadith. Yeah, I was going to read it. You said the hadith. I was going to read it from the Sirah. From the Sirah? Yeah. Which Sirah? Ibn Hisham. So, okay. so. Because uh, uh, I actually my go question, the hadith, which so, is more reliable. Uh, so which, which, which so, source do you want to go for? The less sirah, reliable, the more, sir, more sirah reliable. Sirah was before the um, Sahih Bukhari. So whoa, 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 I'm just going to I'm just gonna break it to, down. When, wait, no, uh, sorry, excuse sorry, me. Hadith, no, hadith. no, 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 no. No, right, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going to allow you to change the topic. I'm not my question, the topic. Yeah, my question is very simple. Six to, um, eight people, those people killed the shepherd. They've been torched by Muhammad. 627, Muhammad got rid of the Banu Kreza and you said Muhammad give his first option was to let people to forgive. Why Muhammad did not practice that in this one or why Muhammad did not practice in this one? There is very, very small possibility that Muhammad, actually it's not even possible because soon after on Saturday afternoon, they got rid of the tribe of Banu Kreza. What he did? He slept with the um, wife of the chief, so he didn't have time to go and deal with those people who killed the shepherds. So there was a time if that event took place later. You said Muhammad first or Muhammad's first option was while it's not in the Quran to forgive. So I'm asking why Muhammad did not practice this. Right. Okay, this is gonna be. You've, you've said quite a bit, so I need to cover it all. All right, now. The ones you remember. All right. Now, going back to the beginning, uh, you keep using certain words that imply certain things. You use the word torture a lot. Now, torture implies that this is something that he Sorry. just enjoyed doing. Sorry. So. Yeah, so using the word torture is not applicable because when someone is carrying out an act of justice, you know, with crime and punishment, it's not torture, right? It's punishment for a crime, okay? It's that simple. Now, the second... I am going to disagree on, with on. that. On. Just be right off of that. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm sure you will. The other incident was the Bernie Correda incident that you, like, that you brought up. Now, I don't believe you have any idea whatsoever about the, the situation about that because you put that on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because this is who we're talking about. Except it wasn't Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that actually carried out the, the order. If anything, it was Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad. Now, the, we have to understand the context as well behind the, the, the incident. First of all, there was a treaty between the Muslims and the Jews, yeah, between the Muslims of Medina and the Bani Qurayla. The Jews broke the, not only have broken the treaty, but have also sided with the Meccans to try and kill the Prophet Now, in those days, if anyone reads history, we know that in those days, treason was punishable by death. Now, when the time came for judgment, the, the chief of Bani Qurayla, he actually said to Muhammad, I do not want to be judged by you. Yeah? I want to be judged by someone else. Yeah? And he pointed to Sa'ad ibn, ibn Mu'ad. Now, why did he pick out Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad? He picked out Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad because he was of the Bani Aws, which were kin, almost, yeah, to the Bani Qurayla. They were very close. 
and he said, I, I want him to judge between us. And the reason was for that was because he thought he'd be more lenient. So obviously now Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's the ruler of the nation. He could have just overruled him and said, no, I will judge you. But he didn't say that. He said, I agree with your terms. Even though you've committed treason against, uh, treason against me, I will allow you to pick who, who, who judges you. So he allowed that. And to Bani Qurayda's surprise, Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad ruled that the fighting men of the Bani Qurayda were to be executed for treason. And so that was carried out. And before the chief was beheaded, he actually said to Muhammad, he said, uh, he actually said to him that you have treated us with fairness and justice. So that is the actual context behind it. So when you actually read into the context, it's not a simple beheading of 600. I, if anything, the number is actually disputed within Islamic sources. So when you say 600 to 900 uh, people and say it as if it's a fact number, it's actually not. So I would like to understand where you, that number comes from. Okay. So I, well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not done. Okay. Now you've brought up um, two examples. I'll be very quick on this one. You've brought up two examples of Muhammad carrying out punishment uh, that was warranted by treason or crime. All right. So none of these reasons were, you know, of of a horrendous behaviour like where he just wanted to go out and kill people. It was nothing like that. But. You're, when we go to the conquest of Mecca, we don't seem to want to look at the flip side where he was in a state in a state of power where he could have slaughtered all the people that persecuted him and his followers 13 years beforehand. Um, but yet he entered in a, in a peaceful manner and with 10,000 soldiers at his back, yet not a single sword has been removed from its sheath and not a single person had to fear for their lives when they entered Mecca. And there he had an option. So you said there was, a, why do we not see a, a time where Muhammad uses the option of forgiveness rather than punishment? I have now given you. Okay. So let me respond a couple of things. Um, here, here's the simple point. Okay. So what's your name? Richard. Richard. I'm going to use you as a guinea pig. I'm sorry. Okay. So this gentleman, and then you explain it to him, okay? If that is, how would you describe that? First, I cut his hand off. I cut his feet off. I put hot iron in his eyes and I let him to die. Is that not torture? What would you describe that? That's torture because you're letting me to die. You're not yeah. killing me right I away. I let you to suffer. Yes. It's not only I let you to suffer while I was doing that. I took your dignity away from you too. That is torture. That is torture. So we just um, give you the definition of the torture. Regarding the numbers of the people, I know Islamic tradition is very... Um, in the disagreement, 600 or to 700, or some put the figure as high as 800 to 900. Isn't that amazing? While Islamic tradition tells us something happened in 627, yet they don't even know how many men's life Muhammad was responsible. It is same Muhammad, same Muhammad. What happened? He. Um, he took the Sophia in his tent. And Sophia. He took Sophia in his tent. Sorry for the pronunciation. And now in the morning when he left the tent, what people said? Because you killed her family, her father and her mother, therefore we thought someone will hurt you as they were protecting him. So Muhammad is the responsible for not only killing them, by torturing and killing them. If you read the story, which tells us this man is on the, this man is on his neck, um, his neck by the rope, and then his hands are all bounded. So there is a physical action of the torturing. Muhammad had the option, two examples, regarding the Urina and the Banu Kureyza, he could simply forgive them. Yet he chose to torch them. I would love to know which treaty you are talking about and which article of that treaty is broken. Can you please explain that to me? 
And then I'll do like maybe one more point and then you do one more point and then we've done. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Right, the torture before the execution. Uh, I will not respond to that because the discussion is between me and Hachim. Let, yeah, let, me, let him finish and then I'll give him to you. Right. <laughs> and then I'll see you next week. Well, maybe. I'll be handed over from person no, to person. No, no. <laughs> you come often? Huh? You come often? Every week. Okay, then I'll see you next week. For tonight, I will pass you to... <laughs> Take it as a compliment. Yeah, all right. Um, okay. Uh, I don't believe that you have addressed um, what I've said properly because... What was that? I'll Remind explain. Me. I'll explain uh, um, why I don't believe you addressed it because uh, you, when you responded to me, you said you were going to respond to what I have just said, but you kept going back to a specific example. So I don't know why you didn't want to address the, the conquest of Mecca where he showed mercy. I'm unsure why you wanted to... Push that aside and uh, um, can just, I just, okay. I, just I, I forgot that I okay. will do it right. well, in my turn. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. I'll, I'll give you that. Now, again, like I said, as a, as a person who's been put in charge of a nation, yeah, who has to carry out order and justice, it is, it is upon them to carry out the punishments set by the state. And, it's, and considering that we know that Islam and politics go hand in hand. All right. That was that was the ruling. Now, so for me, it's not a problem. And like I said, I'm not an apologist. I don't apologize for anything. I'm just explaining explaining the matter. Uh, no, and and then again, you went back to the Bani Qurayda incident and saying that it was the responsibility of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Even though I've given you the entire context and telling you that he, actually, if anything, it was the responsibility of the chief of Bani Qurayda because if he was going, to, if he wanted, to, because if we look at the true tribes before Bani Qurayda, when they had, when they broke the treaty, they were exiled by Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's when he was ruling against them. But when it came to Bani Qurayda, they didn't want him to rule uh, uh, against them. So they wanted someone else to rule against them. So if it was him that was ruling, he would have exiled them. But because they, he, they both, two, both parties agreed that they would have a third party uh, carry out the judgment for them, that is why they have they've been beheaded. So it was actually Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad Sa Mu that carried out the, the, the ruling that they should be beheaded. Because the chief of uh, Bani Qurayda wanted him to carry out the ruling, so it was, there was no. But you dismissed that context, and you still put it on him as it's his responsibility. Hey, so sorry, just quickly. Sorry, no, I just quickly, real quick. Uh, one second. Sure. What? This first time I hear. Can I can I be can I be very rude and then cut your conversation? Okay. No. I'm joking. But... Um, sorry, it was more than one second. That's I think fine, it was like three or four minutes. That's, that's fine, that's fine. So, um. I'll let you to do your conclusion on the topic, right. and then I'll do my conclusion, and then we meet t tomorrow, not tomorrow, uh, ne next, next week. week. Next yeah. Week. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, in conclusion, uh, I don't know, I really know. So how you address, you told me I haven't yeah. addressed the Mecca yeah, the things, Meccan, right, um, which Mohammed practiced right, forgiveness. Could, yeah, that was your one point. Okay. Um, I don't know how to make a conclusion really out of one hadith that we discussed, but if we want to see what, who, who was Muhammad? Was he a, a man who incited violence um, or was he a man who was peaceful? Yeah. We have to look at his life in its entirety. For example, when he was, um, when he was young, uh, before his prophethood even, okay, he was involved in what was known as Haft al-Fudul. Are you aware of it? So Haft al-Fudul was when uh, the polytheists came together to bring justice to people who, you know, had something robbed or, you know, just some, some sort of uh, injustice uh, done to them. And he was a part of it, even though he wasn't a polytheist himself, he was a strict monotheist, he never uh, dabbled in idolatry ever. He still went in and tried to ensure that there was justice for the, for the people, whether they were polytheists or not. And that's an act of mercy, because if, if you just wanted to go out and kill anyone who didn't believe what you believed, uh, he was a complete anarchist, you wouldn't be involved in such a in such a thing. And especially at such a young age, this was when he was a young age. Same again when he was, uh, when the Quraysh had a, a problem to the point where they were going to break out in war uh, over rebuilding the Kaaba and placing the black stone in its place. When he came in, he, uh, he ended the matter quickly and without bloodshed. So 
this is a man who was able to, when we look at the other aspects of his life, not just, not just certain parts where he had to actually enforce rulings, we can see that the man was loved by everyone. Uh, he was a man who, at the final, uh, his last sermon, it was attended by 144,000 people who wanted to come and hear him speak. This is not a man who incited violence because even in his last sermon, he said, be good to your women, be good to your wives. An, an Arab is not superior than a non-Arab. A black man is not superior to, non -non -Arab, uh, to a white man, so, so on and so forth. So he laid down human rights in an essence. And that the Western world didn't know till today. So if we're discussing, if we have a discussion about a certain hadith, we can only, you know, so we don't veer off, we can only speak about a certain hadith and certain, address a certain uh, hadith, a certain situation. But if we want to know who the man, Muhammad sallam, is, we have to see his life in totality. And I think that's what you and I should both do. And what whoever's watching, they should do that as well and make the, the, make the decision for themselves. Okay. So, um, I came to you in the, um, we start in the topic of um, today in Muslim countries there are the violence Muslims or people are practicing. Is this Islamic or not? I brought you, I brought you an example from Sahih Bukhari where Muhammad not only um, practice violence, but he choose to take the dignity of people by torturing them. And then I gave you an, another example on what Muhammad did, did to Banu Kureyza. Of course, we will continue that for next week. But here's the thing. While I can see you are looking at Muhammad and then you are saying, yes, this is the man of peace. And yes, this is the man who come to uh, be mercy to m mankind as Quran claims but when I look at his life all I see no it's not only Muhammad was not has nothing to do with mercy he was the cause of the violence and torching which he even practiced and you confirmed for me that he did the things Allah did not even um, told him to do you told about you, you tell you told us uh, about um, people loved Muhammad so much. His wife Sophia stated actually Muhammad was the one of the men she hated most. People did not love Muhammad, not everyone. Actually, actually, so I didn't address that. Can we go another round? Because I want no, to address that next, uh, next week. week? Yeah, right, put, put, the, put these things down, and then hopefully I will remember. We continue next week. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, no problem. Um, and. You said, you said Muhammad, you said Muhammad um, make, brings the humans right. Yet when I look at Islam, Muhammad clearly states actually to, right, against the right of belief. Those, those who live the religion of Islam, they should be killed. Muhammad, if it was all about peace, love and forgiveness, Muhammad wouldn't say, I would love to die, come back to life, and then die through jihad, die through jihad, die through jihad. He had a love, he had a huge love for violence and for against human rights. Against right to believe, he was against right to believe, he was against right to live as a human. All the 10 articles of human rights, we can look at them um, for another session. But overall, of course, People have those sources in their home. They've got the Quran. People can easily have access to the hadiths online or you can even buy them. Even the biography of Muhammad. When you read them, Muhammad is not the man you will fall in love, but Muhammad is the man you will identify as this is the man, who, sinful, sinful man, who comes to torch people, who comes to bring violence and has the Quran to justify and his life justifies that as well. Therefore, you need, if you are seeking for someone who is the mercy to the world, that will be the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to repent and come to Lord Jesus Christ and worship him.